Opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily the opinion of the host, his guests, or the good people at PIR, People's Internet Radio, seeking solutions. Hello, and welcome to the Save the Silly Humans Project, where we will discuss the elements of a world that is falling apart to the pervasive techniques of the oligarchy and the New World Order. Join me, your host, Robert J. Morris, and a long lineup of special guests who each have their special area of expertise as we unravel and expose the criminals now running our planet. Yes, and on tonight's show, wow... This is the fifth show for the Save the Silly Humans Project, and I have to say, we have a round of guests coming in from America, dealing with some American issues such as, well, nothing important, just uh, perhaps the next four years of presidency and whatever the hell that administration has in store for us. Anyway, I'd like to welcome uh, some of the people from PIR. We have Sherry. Uh, Sherry Fisher, Sherry Wisdom Fisher, I should say, Steve Roberts, and Ed Opperman. And uh, I have them here. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Ah, I hope that's Sherry. The same. <laughs> I'm here too, doing fine. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> yeah, I'm well. Ah. Oh, well, let, let me let you guys introduce yourselves first. Um, we'll start with the lady. We have Sherry. How are you? And... I'm Where are you fat. from? Uh, I'm. I actually. I live in Colorado, actually, and um, I actually have a show on PIR and American Freedom Radio, and then I co-host with Stephen on Revolution Radio, and then I co-host with Ocelli on American Freedom Radio. So I've been really trying to get involved with a lot of the things that are going on. Um, it sounds like I'm trying to be everywhere, but really I'm just trying to hear everything. Yeah. It's hard to be what, everywhere at once, isn't it? Well, and everybody has so much to say and different points of view. And it's like every day I have a jaw dropper of perspective. And so I feel fortunate that I'm that I'm able to be in that position. But also <laughs> sometimes it's it's definitely been interesting. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what Ed has to say today. <laughs> we all are. And uh, <laughs> well, let's let Steve introduce himself. I know Ed's dying to talk, so we'll let him go last. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> keep him, uh, keep me, keep everybody in suspense, right? Yeah. Actually, Robert, I'm from uh, Southwest Michigan. I'm still in. I've lived all but uh, six years in the in the hometown that I grew up in, and uh, I've been doing this for over three and a half years now on wow. the on the internet. So, uh, on the interwebs. Interwebs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which have just been handed over uh, by grace of Mr. Obama to uh, to the United Nations, which we could get into later. <laughs> and, and also a private Opinions corporation. Opinions expressed yeah. on this show oh, are not shoot. necessarily hey, the opinion of the host, his guests, that. or the good... <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell's going yeah, on. Yeah, no, one of my uh, players just <laughs> kicked in. Yeah, it was on loop. Who knew? Anyhow, but... Uh, Yes, yeah, thanks, Steve. Sorry about that. Ed. Yeah, what are you, from Canada, Robert? I am. Okay, I could tell, yeah. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm Ed Opperman. I'm a private investigator. I host the Opperman Report on Friday nights and Saturday nights on People's Internet Radio and uh, American Freedom Radio. Also, a member section, too, at OppermanReport.com. You can subscribe, all kind of exclusive content. Uh, that's about it. I'm in uh, Henderson, Nevada, Las Vegas area. You're in Nevada. Uh, yeah. Sherry's in Colorado. And where are you again? Where are you from, Steve? Southwest Michigan. Southwest Michigan. Yep. Well, um, so might as well just get right down to it. Um, what do you guys think of the uh, the results? I mean. <laughs> Who wants to jump in on that? Yeah, I, I, I was hearing I, crickets for a second there. But. I know. And, and I, I thought, well, nobody knows what the hell to say. I will be, I'll just be up front. I'm tickled pink. I know nobody wants to hear that because everybody um, in our circles, we all know that pretty much the elections are a bunch of bullshit anyway. But to me, this is a change that's beyond what people are seeing maybe because um, Hillary, in my opinion, was heading to take 
the presidency. And I mean, it was a nightmare. I, to me, it felt like we were going to truly be taken over by the demons. So, some would argue that she was let into certain circles and actually pre-selected as of 2008. Oh. This is what I want to get into, Robert. Um, uh, I know it might seem a little <clears throat> macabre to Sherry, but maybe she can um, get the get the gist of it here. I actually would have hoped um, Hillary could have won because that would have brought everything out to front. That would have brought the entire agenda out. And that would have maybe moved it along a little bit quicker. Mm. And maybe it would have even opened more eyes up to more Americans than what Obama did. Obama was <clears throat> and who's the, whose opinion you want to look at it the best and the worst president ever. He was the best gun salesman. <laughs> he was the best president that awakened hundreds of thousands of of people to the corruption and the the way the system works. And I think Hillary would have even accelerated that that process of mm. awakening even more people and awakening uh, more people to the corruption and to the to the process itself mm. as being and to the thieves guild, yeah. <laughs> all of us all of us realize uh, that a bird takes two wings to fly. True uh, that. Wing yeah. and a right wing. And a soldier takes a left foot and a right foot to uh to march yeah. towards tyranny. To get to point B. Yeah. Um so you know I I really didn't want to prolong the process. I wanted to get the process going and get it over with and get this country and the planet healed. You yeah. really think that people are that smart, Stevie? I think you're giving people a lot. I have an answer for that. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to like it. Because I'm telling you that I, when I when that lady like looked at me straight in the face and was like, go, Hillary, I, I got it. Like, I got how stupid this, like, there's a reason it's in the situation that it's in, Stephen. And if we don't do something about it, if somebody isn't, doesn't have the balls enough to stand up, I'm not saying Trump's the guy. I'm just saying... Whatever the powers that be have have something has shifted. Something has altered. This could be an opportunity that we would not have probably had with um, that cycle pitch. Well, on one hand, I mean, from an outsider looking in, I mean, you have <laughs> you guys got a raw deal. First off, let me just tell you, <laughs> uh, it goes without saying. I mean, on one hand, you've got basically an entire crime syndicate. Um, and you know who I'm talking about here with the whole Clinton, uh, their whole association by association, if you would. And then on the other hand, you've got a globalist zealot. And I mean, what is the lesser of two evils, especially when they both oh. don't give a rat's ass about your welfare? Well, There's we picked them. It's not, I mean, everybody can sit there and whine about, oh, God, look at what we have to pick from. Yeah. Well, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, though. Um, by by somebody in um, in the media, I don't know what the name was. This came out probably about three months, four months ago. So the constituents were picked by the parties, not the people. So, I mean, no, you necessarily might not have picked them. You, you know, like, sure. it's, an illu it's an illusion of selection, really. I know Ed. Ed must be chomping at the bit, but there's two, <laughs> there's two questions in the chat room. I'm I'm not sure you're in a chat room oh, there. Oh, you know what? I should probably open my browser for that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Horrible. Question host. number one by Dell. What <clears throat> was it? Forty eight percent of Americans didn't bother voting. Uh, that could be true. I don't know. I think I think the I didn't really get the exact numbers, but it was almost. 60 million on both sides for votes. So that meant, that makes 120 million. Now that's a little bit less than 48% actually, Dell. So, and the second question was who actually are the College of Electors? Anybody know them? I don't know them personally, but. Uh, no, you can't find out who they are because well, that's the thing they you give you a I, talk about. You and I looked into this uh, a couple months back and I give you the. I give you the names for all, all of the electors back in back in 2012. But it was not. It wasn't. It was the senators. No, 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 no. I found the link and, and sent it to you. Don't you remember? Remember that? No. I did. I found I'll it. Have to look that up again. So that. So maybe that's something that we need to be putting out there more is about how that process is. 
anyway, I, yeah, I'll look that. In. I'll look more into that for sure. Ed, what say you? Yeah, Ed's a little quiet there. I was expecting him to be like coming nah. in with both barrels blazing. Nah, relax, relax. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't pick our candidate. The Democrats didn't pick our candidate in the primary. It was picked for us. Uh, Bernie got robbed uh, in, in the primary. So uh, you can't say we picked our that we picked him. You know, we had a guy that could have beat Trump too. By the way, yeah. Um, and and the other thing is, um, uh, you know, Steve was saying about uh, having. Clinton in would have pushed things along, would have escalated things. I don't know if I agree with that because she controls the media to such an extent. Didn't somebody just wind up dead in the last 24 hours? That was uh, one of uh, Sanders' uh, associates there. No, I didn't see that. What, was it not Sanders then? Who was it? I just read it this morning, so sorry. Ignore me. Well, it wouldn't be surprising. I mean, everything, anybody who's talking out against... Um, Clinton, I mean, we all know what happens, and so I'm sure that now there's got to be a lot going on because, I mean, and Ed, I'm interested to hear what they're saying about being able now to prosecute Hillary and all kinds of other things because she won't have... It, they haven't pressed the charges yet. They haven't filed charges. It's not. It won't be complete by the time Obama leaves, so he won't even be able to uh, help her out. No, he can uh, preemptively pardon her. And he can pardon himself, too. Mm. Okay, believe it or not. Yeah. How can he pardon her when it hasn't even been, like, that's so, I mean, I get, they, I know you're probably, I know you're right, but it's no, just so wrong. disgusting. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Okay, but, but I, I thought I heard that you could be pardoned first. But, uh, yeah, it seems to me there is some stuff going on with this uh, Wienergate laptop. Uh, some odd little things that I've noticed. Um, as you know, I did the Wienergate phone, the first uh, case with Wienergate, the original one with the woman here in Las Vegas. I processed that phone. I, I did the digital forensics on that phone. Uh, so I'm familiar with the whole people surrounding Wienergate and Wiener and all these characters. Um, one thing is now, okay, now that's the same. By the way, too, I knew way back then. You can go back and look at some of my old interviews. I was talking about Wienergate, uh, Wiener uh, texting with a 15-year-old back then that we knew about, that nothing happened. Uh, so, but now they got him, okay? And what I think happened is this. There's a guy that works for Trump. His chief of security is a guy named Keith Schiller. Uh, Keith Schiller, uh, what he used to do was um, he used to work for a guy. Well, he was a cop, a New York City cop. And he used to work for a guy named Fisher, the Fisher Foundation, Fisher House. Okay, You always hear about them, that, that Trump uh, made a big donation to them. They do a lot of veterans uh, 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 donations and charities and stuff like that. And the Fisher House owns the Intrepid Museum where mm -hmm. they had one of the big debates. Okay. Now, what this guy Fisher used to do was he used to like to hire cops for funerals. He would hire like 100 cops uh, to come down with the bagpipes and, and with the motorcycles and do, a, a, you know, the traffic control and that kind of stuff. He had to show, show for his friend's funerals. And Keith Schiller was the guy that would broker these uh, cops and hire these cops for Fisher. Okay? I don't even know if you're allowed to do that when you're a cop. But now he's working for Trump. So – Keith Schiller has all these contacts in NYPD. He has all this juice with these cops because he used to get them employment all the time. I'm sure he still has his hand in there someplace. Now, Schiller also, too, as well, as well as myself and my partner, we used to uh, uh, recruit guys for Blackwater. Uh, you'd get a little commission if you could find a right. tired cop to get a job at Blackwater, right? Now, recently, Eric Prince, in the last month or two, Donated two million bucks to the uh, to the Trump campaign. Uh -huh. My, yes. <laughs> okay. Now I've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. You so what that tells me, Ed, <laughs> it tells Sorry. me there's going to be a new. It tells me there's going to be a new war, and there's going to be a new contract for um, for the ex ex Blackwater. What mm -hmm. that tells me though is is that Prince has some inside information that Trump was going to get elected because they knew about dirt on Weiner's computer. And if you go and find out, an, an article just came out today on Breitbart, just today. Now, you go back and listen to my show from last week. I was talking about this. The article just came out today where, where pretty much Prince confirms everything I just told you. No way. Way. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Who would have knew? Yeah. Wow. So, all right. So, yeah. What are your thoughts on the whole Clinton crime family anyway? Well, I got to tell you, man, uh, it's kind of, you know, it's another interesting story is, um, uh, I don't know if you guys heard this story on my show, but I was contacted uh, by uh, a guy who had just, this was right before the debate, the one on the Intrepid Museum. Right. October 9th. Right before the debate that day, this was the weekend that the tape was released, the Access Hollywood tape was released. 
I get contacted by a guy who tells me, Ed, I just got off the phone with Roger Stone. They mm-hmm. want Kathy O'Brien's phone number. Can you get us Kathy O'Brien's contact information? You know Kathy O'Brien, right, guys? Negatory. Transformation, just, uh, Transformation America? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's Kathy Ultra. Kathy Ultra. Right. Roger Stone wants her information two hours before the debate. <laughs> okay. Why? Yeah. Oh, because they invited all the other ones. They invited uh, uh, Paula Jones to the debate. They invited, um, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Juanita Broderick, uh, Kathleen Willey. I've had them all on my show. They're mm-hmm. all there. Right? I mean, my name probably came up, God forbid, in, yeah, that, yeah. in that group. But they're asking me for Kathy O'Brien's phone number, right? As we're talking, and I'm giving them the number like 10 times because he's talking over me. Uh, you know what they tell me? They tell me that they think that Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager, that blonde woman that you always see, they tell me that they think that she's the one that leaked the Access Hollywood tape because she's CIA. <laughs> That's what's going on over there at Trump headquarters two hours before the debate. The tape no about kidding, eh? the Access Hollywood tape on the bus about grabbing the, the vagina. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> sure. I mean, it's it's uh, you know, it's a uh, a psyop t- a tactic. Yeah, I think we're I think we're looking at a psyop within a psyop almost within a psyop even. It's you ever see that movie Inception? No, uh, I don't. I I, Remind me about the plot. Well, basically, it's about entering someone's mind while they're asleep. Insert a thought that they thought they thought themselves, basically, and they in well, it's inception of an idea. But the point is, is that like it's just this confusing. Um, oh, it's, they have that technology. Yeah, they do absolutely. They do. But what they're doing now is like they got so many people ripping over one half. Like you got this one divide. Um, tactic basically, you know, it's a voting system. They get you to, to pick for one, pick the other. It's it's ages old system. But now, I mean, when when they got both sides in their pocket, I mean, uh, you got to look at who benefits. This is what I look at all the time: is who benefits from any decision. And at a point where you only have a couple of options, I mean, this you know, far into the game, somebody's benefiting from both. I understand why they had to put Trump in this time, Robert. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have an they idea do, too, actually, and I wanted to have, explore that. But yes, they do have to change the puppet every now and then to keep the uh, to keep the little masses from coming to an uproar. Yeah. Um, Bush had it for eight years. They could have easily put another Republican in right after Bush, but but they didn't. They they had their golden boy Obama, and they put him in for eight years, and then he tore things up, and now they got to change the puppet to. Keep the right wing from <laughs> coming in, coming to an uproar. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not certain about this, but I, I think, I think these guys, I, the the people at the top, the families, the ones who are really, really pulling the strings. I think these people have actually um, failed in something that they attempted to do many years ago, and um, they didn't think things would take the turn that they have. I mean, we do have a bit more of a global awareness. Um, you know, oh. Monsanto's getting slowly pushed into a corner. We've, we're, we're, we're becoming more aware. I mean, it's not, I mean, not by any stretch are, are we winning, you know, in, in the global scheme of things, but, um, I do believe, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think in the middle of the 19th century, mm-hmm. they had to do something. They, they were, they were looking for mechanisms to have a worldwide awakening and, you know, the Industrial Revolution pretty much led us to the uh, Hollywood, moving pictures, mm-hmm. uh, radio, the television, and the entertainment system. And right. then eventually the, the uh, Internet. The, the Internet has been a, a double-edged sword. It's uh, been the best thing for them, and it's been the best thing against them because well, it's it, it, it served them well where it's designed to serve them, and it believe me, um, it's tenfold beyond their wildest imagination what they can do with it um, in terms of its integral design, and uh, that was actually a subject of a few of my shows and a couple other bits that I've done in the past. Uh, regarding uh, Singularity, Jade Helm, a whole bunch of things regarding um, 
their grasp of this system. What they didn't, um, what they didn't uh, put in their plan was the grassroots struggle that would be the people within it that have kind of sat in their sandbox, I guess you could say, and made their own rules. And while it was for the people, it was for the people. But believe me, they're trying to change that now for sure. Yeah, but who's to say that uh, wasn't their plan all along either? Mm, exactly. I mean, um, if you look in, if you look at the life cycle of the internet, and all all anyone actually has to do is just look at the timeline. Look at its. Here's the word again: inception. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at when it was created, and well, look at it where it is now. The thing is, yep. is that it's closer to where it was than it ever has been because it's back in the hands of the developers that are contracted by uh, DARPA, and yes. you know, yep. and 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 those those other entities. The big question is these these people that we're dealing with, Robert and Ed, mm -hmm. they are far from stupid. They they are far from making mistakes. Absolutely. Right? I don't believe for a second that they made a mistake making the internet available to the public. No. They had to have a good, valid reason. What that reason is, you know, that's it's that's like great. inviting a vampire into your home. Exactly. <laughs> you have to do it willingly. And that's, you know, some would argue that's how their black sinister magic works. But yeah, that's exactly how they do it. They, they you know, why forcibly inject people with RFID chips when you can have everybody run around willingly with a cell phone? That's right. With a tracking device. Yeah. And a, uh, and a, a listening device. Yep. Perfect, you know, <laughs> and you know, in the big Internet of Things, as a as a as a colleague of mine likes to put it, um, they know what you're going to do before you're even thinking about doing it, and that's just oh, based I, on your own algorithm and metric. I heard like six, seven years ago, Robert, that mm -hmm. Google admitted this is what they admitted to. Uh, it may be the truth, and it may not be the truth. They could predict what you were going to do within ninety percent. 93% accuracy. That was like six, seven years ago. Yeah. And that's what they admitted to. Now, what the actual number is, who knows? Yeah. Google does, but I don't. Well, if they can do that with that technology, how the hell can they not get a goddamn ballot box to work in Florida? <laughs> oh, it, it worked. <laughs> don't you know that story, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Ed remembers this one, but uh, there was a reporter that – was speaking to the uh, Bush family and his entourage um, on on the night of the election in 2000, and he says uh, he said, "Well, Governor Bush, it looks like uh, Senator Gore is going to be president." And he says, uh, "That's not the way I see it, son." He said, "My little brother's the governor of Florida." He said, "That's not the way I see it." Oh wow, yeah, it's not who you know, right? That's right. <laughs> well, it is who you know. <laughs> <laughs> I meant what you know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. So, okay. So let's 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 back up a bit here because we were, we we did talk a bit about uh, you know the the Clinton family and and that whole you know I call it a crime syndicate, but it's probably not far from the truth. But I mean, on the other hand, we were talking about Trump, who is obviously a global elitist, and we were talking about how some of these, you know, the, the, these puppet masters, these other people up top, they like to play out, um, they like to play out stories. They like to play, and they'll play the long game. They'll go 30, 40, 50, 100 years in, in the scope of things. And it looks like Israel may play out its own prophecy, and we might have Trump to thank for that. Any thoughts? But a dum dum <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, anyone see that one coming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I've I've talked to a lot of a lot of people. I've, I've you know I've, we all have friends you know that, that are devout Christians and atheists and alike and this and that. But a lot of people who talk about Israel see Israel as the Bible describes it and in its prophecy and this and that and it's meant to be a certain thing. Yet I'm watching it become bastardized and assimilated by the system and it's churning out a version of the prophecy that might not necessarily be the case. Yeah. You know? I, I thought I was gonna get whipped one time, uh Robert, when I was like eight. Mm. Um I think yeah I, my mother had uh just married a, a Catholic man so we started going to Catholic school there and Catholic Catholic Church, and I had known that 
that the Jews had persecuted Jesus. And, uh, you know, I popped up with the question, why in the world does Christianity support support uh, Jerusalem and, and the Jews if they persecuted and threw Jesus under the bus, mm-hmm. so to speak? And you know, I thought I was going to get my butt whooped. Yeah. Wow. Well, Jesus is Jewish. <laughs> Jesus is still Jewish. <laughs> well, you know that? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, hang on. Let me. I had a trained cricket here, but he didn't speak up in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously, guys. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the ages old story. I mean, you know, who did what to who? And yeah, without getting into a theological discussion, I mean, really. I mean, we're now we're talking before about uh, polarized, uh, you know, choices and what have you. And yeah, here's another one: uh, Jew or Catholicism, and you know, or Christianity rather. Sorry, uh, but uh, it's just uh, it's too it's too much. <laughs> it's, it's it's too much to put into the into the big fold of things, you know, uh, without going back to the roots, and that's prior to both of them. And we're talking paganism. And there's a reason why things like Halloween, there's a thing, there's a reason why things like Christmas, all these things were assimilated and pulled into modern, well, Roman, Money. yeah, modern Christianity or what have you. The, the, these things have been brought in to assimilate the people that believe the old ones. So don't for a second think that these things are on their own. Um, and completely isolated or compartmentalized. They're not. They have been built and adapted. <clears throat> Religion is probably the world's first internet, <laughs> in my opinion. Well, it's it may not be the first internet, but it's the first um, one it's of just the first a little con- slower. That's all. It's one of the first control mechanisms. Absolutely. You know, and uh, well, yeah. I mean, it was one with with a global reach. You know. And, yep. you know, yep. it was uh, entire, you know, we look at things in terms of, uh, it's very granular how we look at things now, because we're up to the second, up to the minute. We're getting updated, you know, by emails, by, you know, text messages, by, you know, phone calls, this and that. We're constantly being updated. But, like, in the age of ages, like, you you know, you'd send a carrier pigeon. You might not get a message for two, three weeks. You know what I mean? Or a man um, on a horse, yeah. Yeah. And... and 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 that's just in the next city, you know. But these uh, these mechanisms right now that are getting people to veer in one direction, veer another. It's all it's we all know that this is all basically the the worst parts of 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 brain brainwashing, brain con- uh, sorry, mind control, and 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 other advanced methods. Um, we don't even have to get into like the conspiracy style stuff, like ELF waves and and, and other crap. Yeah. Like this is just straight. I want to control. I want to pose a. I, I want to pose a question out there. Um, I posed it to Sherry yesterday on Facebook. You know, I just I told her. Well, this is what I wrote. I had a terrible thought. Sherry was. Don't, what if Trump does everything he says? Three <laughs> things may happen. They may get their holy war with the um, with the. I mean, with Islam. They may just get the holy war if he does things that he said he was going to do. They may get their race war with the blacks, Latinos, and other minorities if he does what he says he's going to do. They may also get their ultimate war with the communist left in, in America. Right. It, it will drive the left absolutely crazy if he does a lot of the stuff that uh, he said he was going to do. Yeah. And there would probably, there would probably be rioting and uproar in, in the streets yeah well w- what worries me about the clintons <laughs> were there oh sorry sherry go ahead you're quiet uh, it's back Ed. <laughs> it's Ed. oh sorry yeah, I, I sound like sherry sometimes. but then what would you uh, what would your uh, what, how would, would you suggest we resist uh, you know this, this this oppression that we're under if not by rioting in the streets <sighs> that's a great question yeah. take back, i have an answer for that yeah take go back, ahead sherry take back I mean, state's power yeah Assert assert state power. All of that is bullshit. Here's the whole thing is that they are using you guys want to talk about magic and all these things. It's there's reasons that they they use pedophilia. 
there's reasons that they know how to manipulate time and energy and all these things that we consider to be obsolete and about the ancient ways and the old times. They have mastered it. They are using magic every day. Yeah. And they know things that we don't know because it's been held from our teachings. It's been we've been taught that it's a trick, it's a fairy tale, it's this, it's that, all of these things. And what just happened is we just had one dragon family take over from another dragon family. This is it right. doesn't mean anything. It's not we're, all we can hope is that this one has a little more compassion and empathy for the human race because they're all dragons. Or we could hope that this one's a little bit slower <laughs> and that we can kind of slowly it's somehow so stupid. People want yeah. to People are not, everybody's talking about waking up. Are you freaking kidding yeah. me? Look around. I mean, and I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about the circles that we, you know, the thousand people, the 14,000 people, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. I'm talking about the masses that are like either crying because Hillary didn't get in or jumping up and down because of Trump. And it's like, they don't see anything that's going on behind the doors. They don't yeah. see gas prices going up. They don't see their utilities going up, not being able to eat, not being able to breathe, not being able to drink water. Hello. Mm -hmm. like, you, you know, I, I think, I think you got a point there, Sherry. And I think it leads to the fact that instead of trying to uh, fix the problem in the machine from the top, you got to kind of look at the bottom or reconstruct the foundation in order for the thing to work in the first place. And that is us. We're at the bottom. We are the bottom. And I think the people have to be more educated to be able to make more fundamentally better decisions. Like, sorry, that wasn't very, very good English, but yeah, they have to basically make better decisions and they can only do that if they're educated and they're only educated with that which they're told so i mean it's no surprise why we have a generation of morons um and i'm sorry if, if i'm offending anyone out there but we're living in idiocracy are uh, in idiocracy yes yes exactly <laughs> that's beautiful i brought a tear to my eye but yeah you know that that's that's the point here and i think um i mean it's it's we all, you know, anyone who's woken up, and I agree with you, Sherry, wake, wake up. Yeah, it's hard. You can't just go around waking people up. It's the slowest game on the planet. Um, what has to happen is that people have to want to know, and they only want to know when things affect them directly. And as long as they don't feel that they're being affected directly, they're going to be the boiling frog in the, you know, in, in the pot. That's right. Yep. You know, so, I mean, this is what we're faced with. I mean, we have the duty because we're awake. We have the duty now to try and, and teach others. Um, we have to make people want to know because unless they, if they don't want to know, they don't give a rat's ass. Yeah, Robert, I've, I've actually been to, to Maryland once to visit my cousin and her husband and, uh, <laughs> they, they played a little trick on us. Um, hmm. they went and got a bunch of, uh, crab, I don't know, like 20 or 25 of them. And they say, you want to see something funny? They put a. A pot of water on and they started boiling and they just threw the crab in there one of the most god-awful sounds i've I'd, i've ever heard come off of an animal is a crab screaming because they just got dropped in a pot of boiling water well i'd be upset too <laughs> yeah <laughs> Jeez. yeah uh, no as humans i mean we you know we're victims of our own ignorance i mean like you know and, and they're they're to a certain point, it's innocent. But to another point, it's irresponsible. You know, it's irresponsible. If somebody knows something or thinks they know something and they don't do anything about it, if let's say it's something negative or bad and they don't do anything about it, I mean, their inaction is complicity, you know, yeah. in the whole thing. And, you know, I'm not the kind of guy to go and blame the generations before us. <laughs> but uh, they made some pretty shitty choices that we have to deal with, but we dealt with it wrong as well. There's two more questions in the chat there, Robert. Oh, let's see what we got here. Ooh. It says, will Clinton go to jail? And I say no. Obama will probably give her a pardon. Well, and if so it works the way it's supposed to, and I know that, <laughs> that that's probably not going to happen, but if it works the way it's supposed to, if she had already been charged, Right. Like if charges had been filed already and she was looking at some like even if it were anywhere within motions, within disposition, anywhere around within the charging, then he could um, 
he could let her off the hook. But if it hasn't been filed and he leaves, she hasn't, it, it's like pardoning her from something that hasn't happened yet. And, and maybe, I mean, Ed said something and they may do it that way. Mm. Uh, you I, know, I, that may be a hundred percent. Okay. I know, uh, I know Obama can pardon himself. I know that the president yeah. can pardon himself. Well, uh, well, Hey, we, we could have a solar attack tomorrow and, uh, and the whole state, uh, sorry, the state, the whole country will go into martial law and President Obama doesn't have to do a damn thing. He can stay in power as long as he wants at that point. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, I think every single president that has stepped into office has pardoned, and, pardoned their predecessor. Mm. Right. Oh, that's an interesting, yeah. that's an interesting yeah. statistic. I've statistic. That too. <laughs> I have to look into that one. That's very, very interesting. Um, which I, makes I, you think, because now you have to look back how far that goes. Sorry, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, in this case, I think there's a good chance that, that Hillary could get arrested. And if you look at the, the farewell speech she gave yesterday, where uh, that was a somber room, okay? She didn't hug Podesta at all. All this dirt's coming out from Podesta's WikiLeaks emails with this whole uh, Comet Ping Pong pizza place and all that activity going on over there. Prince says that uh, it comes out in Wiener's uh, laptop that uh, she made six trips down to uh, Jeffrey Epstein on Jeffrey Epstein's plane on herself. We know that Clinton went down it 20 times, but now they're saying another uh, six times for, for Hillary. So we don't know what's on uh, uh, Wiener's computer yet, okay? But just the, f the fact that he has State Department emails on that computer is a crime to begin with. It's mm -hmm. not like Obama or, or Hillary. For him, it's a crime. Right. I got a pretty good idea what's on his computer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Child <laughs> porn. Yeah, one more thing real quick, though, is if you notice, he went into therapy. Uh, he went into rehab for a sexual addiction. Now, at this stage, of, and when he's just, they just served the subpoena on his laptops. For, so for him to go running into therapy, he's preparing for sentencing. There's, there's no reason to, he doesn't have a wife, he doesn't have a career. The only thing he's doing that for is for his probation report, a pretrial pre, pre sentencing report. That's the only thing reason he's going to, to rehab for. So that's a good sign that people are going. Wow. And there's another question now, Robert. Uh, go for it. Dell also said, will Clinton supporters get dehydrated with all the crying? <laughs> I don't know. I think they got extra tear glands uh, uh, put in. <laughs> but uh, we'll have to look at this. Uh, the, I think it's all a bit, you know, let's look at the first big promise made, and that was to put her in jail. That's what Trump said, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's see what the first promise he breaks is. Um, I, I'm i kind of leaning towards what Ed's saying. I think they probably will at least pursue it, um, if not to make it look good for the media, at least to try to put other people in bars if she doesn't go i think other people will because they're going to constantly try and stonewall trump in other ways however we can, i mean so we wouldn't even circuit, so put up uh, put up a circus uh, court trial is that what you're saying yeah I, I i would i mean we all remember the oliver north trial eh? kangaroo court yeah. yeah that went on for days and months <laughs> was horrible but uh we might have to go through all that again while they go and do other things in the background while they're distracting us um well, you know one, one one thing is you know trump is a deal maker you know there's no there's no doubt that trump is a negotiator he is a deal maker he's from new york i know how these kind of guys think now he and he's he, he has that, that juice over the nypd and through the the justice department with giuliani okay they got that juice in there they could have made a deal with Hillary saying, listen, because Hillary has the capability to, to, to rig uh, elections. We know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. And say, you rig it toward me, and we're not going to push this uh, prosecution. We're not going to expose you to the world of what we know, uh, what's on that laptop or whatever else uh, dirt they got on her. Yeah, but most of the, I mean, most of the, most of the good researchers know anyways. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not on TMZ. It's not on... Uh, you know, the well, MSNBC. Yeah, it's not on Fox News. I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah, see, this is what we're this is what we're dealing with. I mean, if it's not on the mainstream network, then it's not uh, it's not really happening, right? <laughs> well, what happens if the electoral vote shows that Hillary? What if they? What if Hillary wins the electoral vote? What are they going to do then? Yeah, that's isn't the already counted and over? No, and uh, see, I'm this at is that's what I thought. But see, yep. then when I reread it and I was looking at it, I was completely wrong about the whole, like, I thought that they did the electoral vote in January before the election. 
That's just the preface. They actually do the vote in January of 2017. Am I right, Ed? Well, I think it was December, but I don't think anything's going to happen with that. People would go crazy. Right. Well, that's what I'm, I'm just curious as to how they'll play that. Because it says, I mean, if you look at what the electoral says, that is who and what elects our president and vice president. So if now the people are against, you know what I'm saying? Like, what does that leave? The whole system is like poop. Hmm. Well, maybe now that there's only eight Supreme Court justices, uh, yeah, which assumes nobody can get a win. And uh, maybe there won't be an actual presidential uh, president elected in uh, in January 20. A lot of things can still happen, like we were saying. I mean, the, oh, yeah. the inauguration doesn't even happen for another two months, right? Well, and I think it was, yeah, and I think that Edgar Casey was the one who predicted, and, and I could be wrong about this, I may just be spouting bullshit, but I'm pretty sure that he was the one who, who uh, had the prophecy that there would be no more, that this would be the last presidency, mm. that there would not be another president of the United States. Now, you know, that could mean all kinds of things, because that could mean that the one world order actually has come into play. Oh, well, actually, I have a comment about that, Sherry. Actually, there's been a lot of uh, talk. There's been a bit of a buzz uh, about Obama preparing himself to actually head the U.N. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also another pro prophecy out there that tells that we have our last pope right now also. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I just looked yeah. it up and Casey said we will have a great orange leader in 2017. He did not. <laughs> he not. did. Not. I almost, I almost bought it. Like I almost was like, oh my god, because it. Because it but oh my god, that. Was so bad. Oh, you know, god. Cliff High. You know who has that web bot thing, which I think is bullshit. But anyway, but Cliff High said that uh, he predicted Trump was going to win, and he says that he sees Hillary disappearing. Oh. To be honest, I think the same thing. And here's what's even crazier, and, and it's so crazy because Stephen brought it to my attention and then I heard it on the radio today. The Simpsons. The yeah. Simpsons uh -oh. prophesied this whole freaking thing. They did, did they? The yeah. Simpsons. More they really about this. Go on. And also, too, the, the Back to the Future, too, has uh, Biff becoming president. And they said it was Trump. Is that well, what that was? That's <laughs> true. I remember seeing that one. Well, and they had this whole thing where basically what it is is Lisa comes into being the president after she grows up and blah, blah, blah. And they mention that they have this huge deficit left from Trump, President Trump. And then they go, I mean, there's like there's like five or six things that show or say that Trump was going to be elected president. Yeah, they also show Trump going I, down in the cartoon, the Trump going down the escalator, exactly like the. Um, yeah. That's right. But yeah, it's really creepy. And don't forget about the uh, Trump card, <laughs> pardon the pun, in the uh, Illuminati deck. Yeah. Well, exactly. And then on top of it, then they also, in The Simpsons, they also um, put out a show like two years before the Ebola. And they were talking about, I mean, they totally, I'm telling you, they have, there's like five or six things. If you go through The Simpsons, I know that sounds crazy, yeah. but they are actually telling people what is coming. Like, if you guys want to know what's going on. Well, they got there's that a guy. huge deal uh, surrounding uh, Robin Williams' death with the family guy as well. It seems to be that uh, the two major cartoons uh, <laughs> are definitely well, laden know, I, with I, predictive programming. I question all these celebrity deaths myself, uh, and I have my reasons. But, mm -hmm. you know, look who's telling us that these people are dying. Uh, <laughs> the mainstream media. Yeah. Well, you know, well, one of the guys that does the voices on The Simpsons, he goes to Bohemian Grove. <laughs> yeah, he, he talks about it. Wow. Like I share. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because why have I heard that? Where? What does that mean? What do you mean? The Bohemian Grove. What does that mean? What is that? Well, Bohemian Grove is a real thing, and uh, they go there and they they uh, sacrifice. They do a, a mock sacrifice to this big owl. Uh, as far as we know, they're mock. <laughs> but yeah, and, uh, it, it's a it's a Freemason outpost, basically. Right. Where I, I know now. Now I it yeah. got it. I remembered. Yeah. Hey, sex for two weeks. No women allowed in this yeah. thing for two weeks. Because Nick <laughs> says that they're all gay down. They're all doing yeah. gay yeah. sex down. It's on tape. Yep. But it's not. A, see, here's the whole thing is if people actually understand about chakras and energy and different things, which I know a lot of people think is bullshit, but if you actually look at how a person is made and where their main, like your core chakra is in your, gen, like it, it, it's through your anus, through your, you well, know. That's where the most sensitive parts are. 
Well, and it's not just because it's sensitive, oh, like super soft, it, whatever. It's because it's an energy it's the center. Energy force. Yeah. It's yeah. the force. It's how they can capture energy. It's how they manipulate energy. That's why they do it to children because the fear, when when you manipulate something like that, and you and you take the the center of the source of of what that being is, I'm sure it's like a freaking buffet. Yeah, if anybody out there listening uh, wants to uh, do a quick uh, YouTube search, you can look up, uh, uh, what what's her name, the actress there, um, uh, uh, Angelina Jolie, rather. Yes, when she was younger, she, uh, there's a, somebody snapped a bit of video of her actually talking about one of her accounts with one of these satanic rape rituals uh, that she took part in, and it's actually quite revealing. Um, these things do happen, people. They happen on a regular basis, especially in Hollywood, especially with up-and-coming actors, more so with child actors. A lot of these stories, um, oh, what, what, what was the girl's name from E.T.? Do you guys remember? Um, Drew Barrymore. Uh, Drew Barrymore. She's a prime example. They messed her up before she was even 11 years old, and yeah. and, and she's a tool of their of their trade. And, uh, I mean, it's quite yeah, sad. Robert. Hmm? There's another question in chat there. And I'm going to be leaving here in a couple of minutes, too. Oh, so I might have to start watching chat then? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> is, is America safe in Trump's soft hands? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> if you want to have the New York Times uh, on, on you, sure. He'll use you like silly putty, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but, yeah, you get the funnies. <laughs> but, no. Oh, wow. I, I find I, it. I think personally, sorry, I, just from an outside looking in, I, I think you guys, well, you got, it didn't matter really who you voted for because once you got one other picture, now you got to worry about keeping the other one in line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that Trump would, his idea and what he's trying to portray is bringing back, you know, the, uh, what were those, you know, like Leave It to Beaver and Andy Griffith and, you know, trying to bring back that wholesome guy. <laughs> Kind of, carry, uh, go get your dinner. You know, that's, describe him in the pussy. Uh, uh, unfortunately, and here's the that's the thing about it is everybody's making a big deal about it. But I've been in locker rooms. I've been in different areas where I hear how men talk about women, and I'm not saying all men are like that. But I've heard great. how women talk about men. So don't give me that. That's exactly where I was just going to go. <laughs> Certain things. Now, I don't think, honestly, most women do not go around going, damn, did you see the dick on that guy? I mean, that just doesn't happen. Nobody, I mean, that's, unless you're really drunk and slutty, you just don't really, <laughs> that's not where you go. Call me. <laughs> but you can say things like, damn. You know, I mean, there can be, there's ways that you're doing the same thing and you can have conversations, I'm sure, that can get gruesome. But the whole thing is, is that, who cares about that was such a distraction because his his point of um you know his personal uh, attributes that's what his wife has to deal with that's mm. what his family has to deal with that's what the people that maybe he's he's socializing with but if he gets up in front of um people and, and continues to be degrading to women there are a lot of women in power now yeah. and it is not the same and so he's not going to play that card He's gonna be. He's gonna be Mr. Love everybody. You you guys will see a totally different side of Trump. I truly believe. I think, and this is the part that scares the shit out of me, and it's the fact that he has one hell of a lot of resources at his disposal. So I mean, he's yeah, like, talking real- about building infrastructure. He's talking about. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you down there. Was that Steve? Yeah, I mean, does he really though? Well, uh, he says he does. He also said he went broke. <laughs> and like he's, I mean, <laughs> he's actually been broke f- five times, I think. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I think but, the only a- assets uh, amassing like six hundred yeah. yeah. million or something. His, like With, his broke and our broke are two totally different. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And I, what I'm thinking is that now with, um, well, now with the presidency. Where do his resources begin and now where do they end? And now what kind of power does that bring him? I mean, Ronald Reagan was an actor and had probably a substantial amount of money himself coming into the office. But his limitation 
what were the people surrounding him in that office? Insider information. Right. So <laughs> now we have Trump, who is part of a global elite network of networks. I mean, this, the, <laughs> this guy has power beyond power, whether he's president or not. He already had it. Now that's, we that's my point. He's doing. I mean, to me, that's what I kept saying too. It's like if if he's if we're gonna have a puppet, and he's been running the show anyway because he already claimed he already said that he was contributing mm. to Hillary to Obama. I mean, he contributed to all of these different um, presidencies and and how he was so much a part of all of that, and then turns around and now it, it's like we're just gonna get to see what he's been doing the whole time. I don't think it's gonna be any different. Mm. Yeah. Well, I wanted to say um, I promised Robert an hour, and uh, that's just about what I've given him here. So okay, Steve, thank uh, you. I wanted to say Robert Dumb and to everyone. I I see the American poli uh, political system and the world's political system for actually what it is. Nothing but a distraction, and both sides working in tandem to bring the people bring the people down. Yeah. And, and 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 further corral them, control them, so that they do what they want, which is basically pull the resources out of the planet and make them more money. <laughs> yep. So thank you for uh, inviting me on, Robert. Hey, I, it's a pleasure, Steve. Great to meet you on here, and uh, hope we can do this again. Sure, sure thing. All right, man. Bye. You have a great night, sir. Bye, Sherry. Bye, Ed. Bye. All right, guys, that was Steve Roberts, and uh, he's also from PIR, and it was a pleasure to have him on here with his thoughts. And, uh, yeah, so moving forward with uh, the, uh, uh, well, where do you think things are going to go with Trump? I think Trump is going to steal everything that's not nailed down. <laughs> <laughs> Trump like a hooker a in a hotel room. Yes, Trump is a con man. He's, he's, this guy is a con man to his core. Anybody from New York knows this guy's a con man. And uh, uh, well, also, I think he's a child rapist. I think he's totally guilty of all these accusations of raping these little kids with Epstein and all this kind of stuff. I think he's 100% correct. And his modeling agencies importing these little girls with these H-1B visas. Mm -hmm. But and I think he saw uh, the Bushes and he saw how they 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 built up this empire. He saw the Clintons do it, you know. And he says, "Oh, all I got to do is get in there and I can do it too." Yeah. And I yeah. think he fumbled and conned his way in there, and uh, he got away with it because he's a TV show guy, mm -hmm. and he just pulled it off. I, I don't really buy this idea you guys are saying that everything's all controlled and they're all picked and it's all planned in advance. Uh, I don't see that, guys. Well, I have I have my thoughts on that are that we have different people competing for the same thing. This is how I'm looking at it. And I guess you have people competing to serve the same master, if you would, um, uh, vying for teacher's pet, if you would. And yeah, I mean, we've had different family houses come up through the years and over, you know, like, oh crap. I mean, everything from the Kennedys, uh, you know, we got uh, the Bush family, we've got the Clintons, we've got, we've got all these different families that get caught up in this, uh, you know this debacle of media uh, coverage and 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 shit. Really, it's all shit if you if you look at it. Um, and it most of it is just to basically sway people's opinions in order to you know uh, either gain a vote or gain support for a piece of legislation that will you know have some kind of benefit to their plan. Um, I do believe that the agenda. Like we're talking about like Agenda 2030, uh, you know, these other these other plots. These are still very real things. Who controls them? Well, that's up to the people employed by these families in power at the very top. Any thoughts on any of that? Yeah, I got a question for you. Hmm. <laughs> I've read Agenda 21. I've read the whole thing, all 85 pages. And I see nothing in there that's any kind of threat to anything. I see, I see a, a bogus uh, fluff piece of a study that was, you know, some, a lot of people got paid for it. A lot of people made a lot of money on it. But there's really, there's nothing in there that's even slightly scary. Or, mm -hmm. or all this stuff people always say about, there's a, they want to move people into the cities and then they want to take away cars. None of that stuff is in there. Well, see, the thing is, it's, it's in there as bullet points. They, they'll they, read the whole thing. What page? Yeah. They, well, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll have thing. to pull that up. We could make <laughs> that it. uh, be a great that that would be a great show actually because uh, we we have covered those documents in the past on on a couple of podcasts. Uh, everything from the Trans Pacific Partnership, the TAP, the P, TPP. Um, 
we've covered a lot of these things where what they do is they put in these bullet points and then they fight for legislation down the road, whether it be by way of a false flag uh, operation of some sort, uh, school shooting or, you know, bombing in France or something. You know what I mean? They'll find a way. And usually nine times out of ten, the legislation is already drafted up and just waiting to be signed. And while people are mucking around watching the television sets, um, these things just get passed. Okay, TPP is another story. Yeah, but I mean, but the, in the agenda, I, I don't, hey, I agree with you in the sense that I think those articles like Agenda 20, uh, 2030 is the newest, you know, is the newest slated piece. The, these are, I think these are show pieces. I personally think that this is just another method to get people riled up and talking just to find out who's talking about it, to be honest with you. But that, You're right. right. That's, a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation for, yeah. you know. It, but uh, but yeah, I mean, these things are actually happening. I mean, they're happening slowly over time. And these agendas, like those bullet points I mentioned, they do talk about the methodology of control. And, and yeah, I mean, you guys know what the Trans-Pacific Partnership is all about. Yeah, yeah. that's... Yeah, it's different, though. It's not Agenda 21. No, but see, the elements are. Uh, the pervasive elements are in the legislation. See, like, for instance, I'll give you an example there, is that now what they're doing by way of the TPP is that they're slowly squeezing out the entire holistic community out of holistic remedies. Why? Because now they're going to synthesize and patent every single thing so that now it becomes a licensable variation. So, um, like... <sighs> I'll tell you right now, there's no mention of any of that in Agenda 21. I've read the whole thing. And the way the reason why I went to read it is because I had a guest on, you know, who was telling me all the stuff that was in there. And I says, well, and I, says, I says, does this thing even really exist? <laughs> you know, is it something that's hidden, you know, that's secret? You know, and I went and I found it and I sat down, I read it for two days. None of that. And all these videos you see about it, that's all garbage, man. And this book by Glenn Beck, we're going to rely on Glenn Beck. It's all a bunch of garbage, man. There's nothing in it. It's yeah. all. A, uh, so, uh, some people do like to sell books. Um, yeah. Supporting uh, you know, communities you know. of, you know, uh, you know, helping people. It, it's all about the uh, promoting economic development. There's yeah, nothing yeah. in there about this, all this conspiracy theory stuff in Agenda 21. You can read it. It's 85 pages. It's not that long. No, no, it's not. But it has yeah. been updated to Agenda 2030. So, um, <laughs> Maybe the secret stuff's in the agenda. I, no, I hey, listen, it won't be much different. It's laid out pretty much the same way. But it does talk about building what? these mega cities. It does talk about, you know. There's nothing in there about mega cities. There's nothing in there about mega cities. No. At all. No, no, not even a word. No, not even close. Look, look at it yourself. Yeah, you're going to have to. Here's the thing. Uh, when I was a kid, right, 17 years old, I used to hang out down in Louisville, New York City, and they told me about the Global 2000, the Global 2000 plan. And this was a UN plan. It was gonna, and it was gonna be practically the end of the world, just like Agenda 21. It was this big plan to reduce the population, all this stuff like that. And it always stuck in the back of my head, and I was terrified of this thing. Like Global 2000 was coming in the year 2000. Yeah. 2000 came and went, man. It said 16 years later, nothing of this stuff from Global. No one even talks about it anymore. See, you know? yeah, I, I'm. I, I'm on the fence with that whole thing because here, uh, the way I look at it is this, is that people are useless to the system if they're useless to the system. So um, I don't think they're going to do a global die-off. If they do population culling, they're going to do it slowly. They're going to do it by way of disease, and they're going to do it by way of genetics, which are untraceable. That's how they're going to do it because that's the intelligent way. If I, was a, if I was a super mastermind, that's how I would do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, oh, wait, let's go ask Bill Gates. Let's see what he thinks about it. Um, well, I don't even think it's that difficult because the whole thing is, is if you look at the food you're eating, 60% of every death, in the, especially in the United States, I'm not sure about other countries, but in the United States, 60% of every death is actually caused from some form of malnutrition, regardless of what the actual effect is. Absolutely. And, you know, um, a lot of people don't look at that enough. Um, and it's food. It's what you're putting into your bodies. I mean, you know, with 98% of what you put in your body is processed. I mean, you're only getting what they give you. You and might as well just eat the box. It might be better for you. <laughs> be, uh, some roughage. Yeah, yeah that's true. We do this, uh, this thing called a Daniel fast. And it's uh, 21 days. And uh, no, no sugar, no alcohol, no coffee, no cigarette. No, no cigarettes, of course. But, uh, no meat, no, yeah. uh, no bread. You know, and uh, the the worst thing to to get off of is the sugar, you know, because it's in everything. 
And, and it's uh, the most addictive, in my opinion. The sugar is the app. People don't have It's worse than heroin. Yeah. And they don't realize how much they consume. It's in everything. Absolutely. And, and not only that, um, what a lot of people don't realize is uh, sugar is probably the single most marketed, if you wanted to call it a drug or, or narcotic, go ahead. But it's the single most used substance uh, next to sodium with sodium in the same family it is it's like the biggest thing in food um and it's the most poisonous if your immune system is compromised and you have rogue cells turning into a tumor guess what uh the 10 step process of glycolysis that your cells normally have no longer apply because the cancer cells defeat that they don't have that 10 step process through the mitochondrial dna they literally just eat sugar so they'll get the sugar before the rest of your body does, and that tumor grows. Sugar is poison, people. Well, and what's interesting about certain things is that it's, it's almost like it, people are so worried about GMO, but if they actually look at how a lot of things are producing, like a lot of the fruits, it's not necessarily the genetics. It's, it's the depletion because it, it, there's, there's not enough nutrients left in the soils. Mm -hmm. They're not... It, it, when you're and people can believe in chemtrails or whatever they want it, i don't i don't i don't have proof of that myself like i've never actually talked to somebody themselves that said yeah i did that but i know for myself that i live next to a sunflower that like hundreds and hundreds of acres of sunflowers and they would just drench that soil and everything in just this horrid um uh bug killer or mm. whatever so, I mean, it would be like, I mean, it would, you couldn't even breathe outside hardly. It was so toxic. And, yeah. and that's what they're putting into. And then they'd be shipping that stuff off to make all kinds of stuff. So I'm sure that they're doing that with other products. And it's not just the products that we're eating. Then it's destroying the, the earth. It's, it's going in and it's actually depleting just like it's doing to the body. It's like it's happening from the inside out. It's true. Um, there's measurable levels. People actually have tested the air in recent years. Uh, there are high levels of strontium, barium, aluminum, sulfide, and oxide, um, among other chemicals. Those being the big ones. Also, these are in the nano particulate range of size. So therefore, they breach the epidermis. They, they go through the plants. They go through the soil. They're in everything. Anybody who's growing organic, believe it or not, unless you're in a controlled environment, your organic is only as organic as the air that it's, you know, that surrounds it, unfortunately. But that is the world that we're living in right now. Well, I feel like I have almost, so I grow every year. I grow a lot of food and I, I grow weed. It's legal here, blah, blah, blah. This year, um, I saw a lot more activity in um and around this area with construction and and whatever people were calling chemtrails and and this and that and my plants were stunted and not just my you know not just the weed but i mean like the corn wasn't as big the broccoli all the stuff that normally grows like crazy because i bring in you know this dirt from the dispensaries and so it's you know it's rocking with all this nutrition and it was still sucked dry. Like the pH yeah. levels were so low, I couldn't believe it. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts there, Ed? I grew up in the Bronx. I know nothing about farming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, which is uh, <laughs> pretty much it's a blue collar town. And about five, six years ago, I moved out to uh, the country on the other side of Canada, in British Columbia. Moved out to the country and, come, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was missing until I went out there, you know. It was amazing. Um, but uh, there, that's when, because it's all surrounded by orchard and uh, farmland and, and, you know, uh, fisheries and stuff, you, you really start to get an idea of how much pesticides and chemicals are really used. Uh, yeah. It, it's insane. And, and. You know, you know, it's worse than just using it. It's when you got a community of orchards all using it together. Um, and, yes. and, and, and they're, you know, they're covering each other's pockets and this and that. And it's, it becomes, yeah, it, it, it's. Well, 
even with the EPA, and this is, I also know this, yeah. this is, as a kid, I interned with the EPA, and the reason I got so disgusted is that was when the very first super fun coordinators were coming out, you know, and they were busting all these people for doing environmental no-nos. Well, they were just paying fines. Mm. So, like, there's certain, like, Coors here was putting stuff in the water, and so basically they just came to an agreement, well... You know, they, they really couldn't stop doing that, so they just had to pay every month to, you know, counteract it. But you never see any of the counteracting going on. Mm. And that actually brings up a good question I want to bring to you guys now regarding Trump. Do you think um, that I already mentioned that, you know, he's a financial czar of sorts. Uh, do you think he's going to do things like stopping pipelines and uh, stopping growth in places where it harms the individuals? Do you guys think he's responsible that way? Not even close. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, is that he did, bring up, he did bring up a lot of conspiracy stuff in the beginning, and then you never heard anything else about it. Well, so here... Probably- yeah, and you know, um, he really was touted quite a bit in the very beginning of the 18-month saga there by people like Alex Jones, and um, it was like he was pre-marketed from the very beginning of this by the conspiratorial, you know, uh, reality analyst <laughs> uh, uh, pocket, you know what I mean? Well, you know, you, you got to look at Trump. You know, like I said, the guy's a con man, you know, yeah. uh, and uh, this guy, Giuliani, who's his buddy here, you know, is oh, from New York. Right. Yeah. You, know, I, I, you know, I know Giuliani. I, I, uh, when I did the, the pizza uh, connection trial and the commission trial, Giuliani was the prosecutor on those cases. Right. And then I met him again later on uh, when he was running for mayor. So, you know, Giuliani was the guy who investigated, I, I told... Uh, oh, the, before, the 9-11 report. No, no, no. He oh, investigated oh. the Presidio case. Colonel Michael Aquino and the child molestation that was going on the Presidio case. That's right. And he went over there and investigated that and gave uh, Aquino a clean bill of health, said that nothing happened. Mm. You know? And, and how, much of that, uh, how much of that evidence in the case is, uh, is for the public to sift through? Well, I don't think there's anybody, even what's on the surface of that case. I don't, well, there's a 30 kids over there with the same STD. I don't think there's anybody who questions uh, that Aquino, what he's been up to. There's how many right. witnesses are there walking around now? Gotcha. Uh, adult, adult witnesses now that I know that have restraint, that he, restraining orders against him. You know? uh, huh. So I don't think there's any doubt about the, Aquino's the complicity and all this kind of right, stuff. Right, right, right. You got the Giuliani. It was up to his neck in 9-11, all that stuff too as well. Right. So that's Trump's buddy, man. You know, it's so, a yeah. And the way, and it even gets better too, because Trump's uh, his uh, mentor was Roy Cohen. Uh, you know, the the famous New York. Uh, and first of all, he's with the whole. Uh, you know, those uh, who's that guy? Uh, the, the communist uh, commissions there. You know, the Un American House of Un American Activity Commissions. Roy Cohen, uh, and Roy Cohen was a notorious guy. There's allegations, and Roy Cohen is the one that hooked him up with the Studio 54. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of allegations against Roy Cohen that there's three little boys buried on his property. Okay, you can listen to uh, Jim Rothstein. I've uh, heard about this actually. That's right, and he talks about this that he he was investigating these the missing three little boys, and he thinks they're buried on Roy Cohen's property, and that's Trump's buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the guy, that Trump's mentor. They, they they took Trump around and introduced him to people. There's a whole big thing, too, about Trump and, and his connection to this guy, uh, Casablanca, this modeling studio guy. Right. Who was notorious for, for you know, molesting these little 14-year-old kids. And then his connections with Epstein. You know, many of these little girls that Epstein was victimizing worked at Mar-a-Lago for Trump. Okay. Right. And Trump lives there, man. He lives at Mar-a-Lago. Then he's buddies with this guy, Adnan Khashoggi. Again, another guy with this uh, human trafficking and, and, and drug dealing and arms dealing and stuff like that. Uh, anybody who, even for a second, thinks that Donald Trump is some kind of savior on a white horse that cares about you or cares about me, it, it is just so far yeah. from reality. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you because, I mean, well, it, it really didn't matter who... <laughs> got voted in now did it i mean because the clintons are worse i know like so like, yeah. where, where, where does you know where does one start where really does, where does the other like, what the hell how did this even happen 
Uh, I don't know. But wow. I'm, I'm happy Trump's in because, like I said, I think it's going to vitalize the left. I think that we're going to have street protests. And I think that's the only way to overturn these people. Just like they do in France, we have to all take yeah. to the street, have general strikes, shut down the highways, and, and, and shut this stuff down. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a realist first when it comes to things. And, like, it really is going to take a lot from, like, we can't fix the problem from the top down. There's just no possible way. Like, well, and there's too many happy people about Trump being in place, and yeah. and there's too many. I mean, even the people who said they were on Hillary's side, there was a whole lot of them that were showing up voting for Trump. Yeah. And so I would be surprised if most people, I would say, sixty-five to seventy percent, have no clue what's going on, and they are yeah. just seeing again that hope for change because that's what they put out in the media. Right. I would really, really like to get some. Uh... I'd like to get some opinions from some stock traders and see what kind of movements are happening financially right now because, I mean, we both, I'll be both, all three of us here know that the, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve is making up the rules as they go in real time. I mean, they're, you know, quant quantitative easing all the way to negative interest rates. I mean, Jesus Christ, things that have never even been heard of are happening. And now we got, we have a Trump in, in the American uh presidency so i mean and why does he have to like self tan so much like why do you have to go orange like how does like it wasn't embarrassing enough now we have to have all these countries like poking about the orange guy i mean really uh, that's totally self-inflicted why did he do that you know what that's an old-fashioned new york barbershop thing they got these sun lamps that they put on your face <laughs> and they put like little cotton balls over your eyes and that's why he has the, the eyes are white uh that that's a that's an old New York thing at the Sheridan Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up, Ed. <laughs> oh, that's what was awesome. that? Go ahead, Sherry. Sorry. I just think that's so, like, I don't know. I mean, it just really, I guess, does go to show that. He has no self-awareness. Oh, well, and it's, and it's also no one around him that tells him, hey, man, you know, your face is orange and your eyes are white. You know, there's oh. no one telling him that. Or but, worse, he believes his own self-induced awesome. awesomeness. Yeah. <laughs> Where's his people? Why isn't somebody saying something? Uh, probably because he's signing all their paychecks. He ain't gonna say. They ain't gonna say shit. And if you look the way he lives, you know, he has a gold toilet seat and gold faucets. You know, it just yeah. it's. And that's the kind of thing that worries me. Right you now, you know, it's that kind of an attitude. Christ, I've heard people talk about like uh, bidets. <laughs> Lucky to have a, a hole in the floor to shit in, let alone a, you know a bidet. <laughs> you know, that's a fancy crap. Well, but <laughs> but you know, th there's a class of people out there who wouldn't be on a toilet without one. You know what I mean? Like that's the it's a kind of mentality, like uh, that we're, the kind of mentality uh, paradigms that we're dealing with. Because I mean, when you got the average everyday Joe working his hard job every day, coming home, you know, he's not worried about if someone's shitting in a toilet outfitted with a bidet or not you know what i mean <laughs> he's just happy he has a place to crap you know and and we got these people out there in a position who can really do something who actually really physically do something cause change make the world a better place but choose not to you know this this is this is what we this is what we deal with I guess I can see it from both sides in a lot of weird ways because I also, I don't have a lot of faith in the human race. I think that a lot of people are still out there doing things and acting in ways that are not united. Yeah. I mean, if you look around and, and there's things going on in certain parts of the world, all over the world, where they're still killing each other and raping and beating and, I mean, just like these horrific not just the elite, like the human race is kind of gross. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. And so, you know, if you were looking up above and you're looking down on this rat race, I can see where you might be like, mm, maybe 50% should like not be around. And I'm not saying that that's how it should be. I'm just saying I can see that that perspective, because you don't know each person. Or we could have that other 50% around just a little more self-aware, a little more educated, so they're not such a pain in the ass. 
We can't have that because then they're not good drones. <laughs> True story. Have you guys been looking into these Podesta emails? Uh, trying not to, actually, to be honest. Uh, only, only because... It, <laughs> These, I mean, we had we had the WikiLeaks with Assange, and then we had you know the the, uh, the Guccifer releases, uh, both of them now. Um, crap. I mean, some of this stuff is right out of the realms of science fiction for crying out loud. So I've been trying to kind of keep my uh, feet planted on the ground. Yeah, and yeah, I'm doing a show on this on Saturday. Okay. I want to hear. I want to hear. Yeah, it's. It, let me tell you something, man. It's really, really, really intense stuff. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. They're they're definitely using code. Talking about pizza and sauce and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about some kind of code, and then they talk about this place called um, uh, Comet Ping Pong Pizza. And then when you start looking into that place and the guys that run it, they're into all kinds of creepy stuff, man. Online behavior. Making jokes about kidnapping kids, making jokes about raping kids, making jokes about having rooms where they torture kids. Really? Yes, and yes. it's it's right in the open, guys. And it, and the owners of these places are linked to like Politico and the Media Matters. Uh, th- this is big, big, and this is why I think that Hillary wasn't hugging Podesta. This goes real. And by the way, too, there's a slice of pizza too in the Illuminati card game too, as well. Oh, there is. Is there? Ah, yes. Well, interesting. Well, there's a meme about it. Who knows? I don't know if anybody's really investigated to see if it's in there. Well, you know, I have to. I, I got to order one of these damn things. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on Amazon later tonight and just order one of these decks because I'd like to go through every single one of them. Um, I, I've done it virtually. Like I've gone through every single card in the deck online, kind of. You know, <laughs> but uh, I want to get one in my hand and look at this damn thing and like really examine it. Cause it's, there's a lot of, I don't know if they update these things. I should get one from like 20 years ago or something if they have it. Yeah. Cause who, who knows what they're slipping into that, you know, they, yeah. they, to trick us. But there, there's this artist uh, with a Serbian name. It's very hard to pronounce. And um, her, her photo, her uh, artwork is on Podesta's wall in his office. And when you look at this woman, you go to her website and you look at her art it's right there in your face of um, a scenario of a, a torture chamber, okay, with the tiled walls where there's guys in there, these Serbian guys with bulldogs, pit bulls, uh, with their shirts off holding these pit bulls, and, and little kids with their asses all red from being spanked and the bottom of their feet all red and uh, all in different positions. And so, this is really, really, really graphic, intense uh, imagery Mm-mm. that can only come from someone who's been in, in that kind of a, a setting and seen this with their own eyes and then went back and documented it all. So there's, there's all that, you know, and then it, there, there's a lot of stuff, man. Even Obama's uh, connecting to this. They got one of these ping pong pizza guys uh, has a picture of Obama playing ping pong, ping pong with a little boy in some room in the White House, and uh, then he posted on his thing. Somehow he got a picture of this. Mm-hmm. There's another photographer that somehow got a She takes all these weird pictures, too, and she got a picture with uh, a portrait of Obama, and her other stuff is all weird stuff. And uh, these restaurants and these pizza places, that, that, that what's his name, uh, Podesta's talking about in these emails. Right. And right. talking in code. You can tell they're talking in code. It's creepy. It's funny, Abel Code is like you know when someone's talking in code because you have no idea what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> well, they, 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 this one woman sends him an email saying, "We found a handkerchief that's pizza related. Do you want us to send it back to you?" Oh, you know, nice. How does that make sense? That you know? makes absolutely no sense. But these restaurants and these pizzerias that are all owned by high-profile, big, powerful uh, uh, Democrats are right over the Connecticut subway line, an abandoned subway line. Uh, and there's pictures of them digging down in their basement. They got a picture, too, of some room uh, with the air conditioners in it, like a cement room with air conditioners, an underground room. And they're saying, oh, you just hose it down after you're done. Mm. Okay, picture of a little baby saying $1,200 for sale. On their business. Yes, on their business website. That's over the top. It's uh-huh. way over the top. And then so you can Google this stuff. Just Google ping pong pizza and you're going to uh, comment ping pong pizza and Podesta. Just Google that. There's like about 20 different sites. People are running around. And a lot of this stuff has been taken down since. It's, but it's been archived. They got it on archive sites. Yeah. That's where so, uh, sites like Wayback Machine come in really handy, people. Well, even some of this stuff is not on Wayback. Oh, really? They, they, 
Yeah, yeah. It's being scrubbed. A lot of this stuff is being scrubbed. Uh, you know, even to, I even heard, too, that Epstein's mansion, you can't find it on Google uh, uh, satellite images anymore either. But so. this pizza, potatoes. Oh, yeah, there's some YouTube videos. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff up there. Wow. Well, I'm going to have to look into that just for uh, information's sake. Wow. I mean, how twisted is that? I mean. It's, yeah, it, it, it's to a degree, you know, because, you know, I investigate this kind of stuff all the time, and, you know, with, with Epstein and stuff. This is just such, to such a, uh, uh, an extreme uh, degree Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really a whole new ball game, you know. And uh, what do you guys make of uh, this whole? Uh, uh, there's a bunch of uh, crap about uh, and hubbub about Clinton being associated with the Space Administration, um, in in some capacity, uh, hiding information or something or other. Well, I actually talked to Carol Rosen about that. Mm -hmm. There was that email from that woman uh, to Podesta uh, claiming, ah, oh, geez, uh, I forget who the, uh, who the astronaut was, but she, she included a, an email from an astronaut to Podesta talking about their secret wars in space and stuff like that. And I contacted Carol Rosen about it, and she said, she kind of gave a long explanation, kind of saying, well, the very nice woman didn't really have permission to send that email. I got to do a whole little segment on that. I got to read uh, the email and then uh, Carol Rosen's response. Mm. But the, the impression I got was that the, the woman who sent the email was a little nutty, <laughs> okay? Because uh, I traced the email back to her website. I found her and stuff like that. Uh, but right. there's another thing going on there uh, out there that's pretty interesting, too. You know, there's a picture of uh, uh, Peter Lavenda uh, with Podesta. Peter Lavenda? That name rings a bell. Why? Uh, Peter Lavenda, you know, uh, he's done all that work on the Process Church and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, yeah, Peter, you got to look him up. He's an interesting yeah. character. And uh, he's done a lot of research. And um, there's, a, there's a picture with him with, with the... Podesta. Mm. He's saying it's because somebody just wrote a book about UFOs or something like that, and he attended some kind of a documentary. So he wrote a really long explanation about it. We, we just the, the explanation just came out like the other day. But it's just kind of weird that uh, you know, this guy pops up because a lot of people are suspicious of him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk though, like about what's you know what's going to happen in, in in the next. Well, I guess next say next coming two months because. Uh, there was the uh, Obama just went and signed uh, a piece of legislation uh, regarding uh, solar weather or space weather. It was basically a space weather bill uh, for FEMA and for the UN to take control uh, in the event of, uh, uh, I guess you could say, an extraterrestrial um, attack of some sort. You know, whether it be natural events or or or, or other alien events or whatever but uh the point is is that now that that's been signed i mean are the do you believe that these might all just be signs leading to something or just something for us to chase our tails around i have no concern about anything the u.n could do um i lived in new york right by the i've dated a girl that was a u.n delegate uh, and uh, the u.n uh, the entire world's u.n troops how many how many uh, troops do you think the u.n has oh wow no, don't look I, it up <laughs> Probably not as many as they did 20 years ago, but yeah, that's, I don't think they so much, they don't, I don't see them using UN troops, to be honest with you. I see them using outside contracts. Um, and the only reason I say that is because it's the easiest thing to do. And these uh, corporations that get contracted, they operate with impunity and under the veil of the secret, you know, secrecy act. So, um, and uh, it was something I observed uh, first time traveling overseas last year, in fact, was when I went to the UK. I got, uh, I got uh, thrown in jail and deported overnight. Like, yeah, uh, because, you know, and I looked and it was Task Force Corporation. I was surprised to see that their own government doesn't handle immigration. And in fact, when I did my research, I found out that none of them do. None of the countries in the Five Eyes do any of their own security. They All of them. They're all, it's Task Corps Corporation, Mighty, G4S, uh, just to name a few, Sir Corps, you know. Academic. Yeah. But, but the thing is, yeah, UN troops, total UN troops and UN police is only 85,000 guys. Really? Worldwide? Worldwide. Wow. NYPD wow. is 30,000 guys. 
Yeah, that doesn't that. Yeah, see, <laughs> thirty thousand tough guys. <laughs> you know, it? plus then you got uh, uh, New Jersey PD, you got NY, uh, New yeah. York. Yeah, you know, they pretty much outnumber the UN forces right in New York. Yeah, New York, New York could take up. <laughs> <laughs> so could Canada, by the way. Canada has more uh, guys. They have more uh, airplanes than the, than the UN. I've looked it up. <laughs> we and, do and, actually. Yeah, you know, okay, and even all these guys too, like Whack and Hunt. They don't have enough guys to do this. Uh, all you know, the United States, our military budget is like eight times the next country below us. You know. Oh yeah. And then if you look at the next eight countries or ten countries, they're all our allies. You know, so like we have such world superiority over anything. We, yeah. we don't need to be afraid of the UN or even privacy. We need to be afraid of our own government. These, these are the ones we need to be afraid of when we should be, you know? And this is where we're right here, too. I mean, we just, this is what we got to be resisting. Yeah. And it, Canada and the US, by the way, are like down like 35 or 40 on the list of the smartest people on the planet. So <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> well, we should move then, right? If we move, we'll be smarter. <laughs> no. but I, I mean, I think that I, I'm. I know that I'm always way out there, but I uh, I do believe in the Matrix, and I do believe in programming, and I think that they have capabilities of doing things that people would think are in the movies, because mm -hmm. I've seen things that years ago, working and doing contract work for Lockheed Martin and doing things, I had no idea what I was looking at then, mm -hmm. but being able to see the satellites and how things were set up, and this was 20 years ago. Yeah. I mean, it was a solid wrap around the planet. I mean, it was a solid line. I thought it was like them describing like the, I don't know, like at that time I was so, I was like, oh, it's the vibration of the planet. Mm. He's like, no, oh, those are satellites. Well, it's funny, in 1992, that was when, oh, geez, that was just a year after Operation Desert Storm. That was uh, right around the time that the GPS satellites were, it was about a couple of years after the GPS was put up by the military. Um, it was being used by the civilian with a particular uh, error level, um, an acceptable error level, which was actually pre-programmed so that civilians couldn't use it properly. Um, that's all. Uh, you know, yeah. in the dust now. But in 92, I was a bulletin board system uh, system operator. I, I, I created one and I ran that rather successfully in Ontario. And at a certain point, about three years later, I had about maybe, I don't know, three hubs and about 200 nodes, meaning 200 people connected to one of the three hubs. And we ran a FIDO Opus email network, which operated outside of the internet. This was just through analog lines and had nothing to do with the internet. And we were actually opposed to the internet. When the dot coms were coming out on the TV and people didn't know what the hell was going on, they hadn't even learned how to use a fax machine yet. And um, we were against it. Why? Well, even then, without the internet, we knew what the internet was about because why we were programmers. And... Um, we 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 were we were we were against it. We knew what it was for. We knew what DARPA was. We knew what the ARPANET was designed to do from 1967. You know, but uh, I, I I guess the whole but, but these things that you're talking about, they're absolutely yeah. something to be concerned about because they definitely are being used. Um, like all of these things, um, elements of the matrix. Uh, Time. Uh, time, yeah. I mean, all of these things in varying degrees are being utilized either on either on an experimental level to gain information or to use it because it's already been a proven uh, science and then they can use it against people or for their own benefit. Um, and in others, they use it against each other. I mean, perfect example there is weather warfare. I mean, this is happening in real time right now as we speak. Well, let me ask you a question. Who, who has access to that information? It's it, uh, whoever does doesn't have access to the to the tons of different uh, radar feeds that we have that we can watch and monitor these th these things. Lots of really good researchers are watching lots of different uh, leads in real time, and we can only observe the effects. I mean, we we can't get the uh, main pooch to sit on a chair and tell us what he's doing. Um, we can't. You know, that's impossible. Um, but all we can do is observe the effects, you know what I mean, of what's happening. Because I'll tell you a story. I, one time, uh, it was during the OJ trial. Right. right? It was like 90, 91, right? 
um, I was in a room with Rudy Giuliani was there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so was a, a guy who was uh, Ronald Reagan's uh, uh, campaign finance director for Connecticut. And we were talking about how, well, they, they have satellites. And the guy was a private investigator, too. Right. We were talking about how they have satellites that can, they can see everything. Why can't they, they see in front of Nicole's house what car was there when they killed Nicole? Right. right? And I could tell you right that, that, that Giuliani didn't have access to that information, and neither did this other guy who knew Reagan. Mm-hmm. So who has access to this information? Who has? And you're What's talking that? about the Bush families. You're talking about the Morgans. You're talking about the Rothschilds. And those are just the fronts. You know, there's, what, 500 and something families, just conveniently probably the same number of electors. I'm not saying that they're related. I'm just saying that the number is the same. I, but uh, Yeah. Go ahead, sir. It, it, the whole thing is, is that, and if people, I mean, I'm not saying that I know this as a fact. But when I, every, all the research that I've done, and I'm not a spring chicken, and I am involved in the legal system, and I am involved in a lot of different things that, where it affects me directly. So I'm always looking, looking, looking. And pretty much it always comes up with these same families, same money, pedophilia. I mean, things that you would never, like, it drops, I, I'm telling you, like, I can't even believe it myself sometimes. Like, I think I'm insane. But it's, it, the rabbit holes are not about all the things and the distractions that everybody's seeing on the front like this the stuff with the magic that they're using in these ceremonies and all of that stuff people can poo poo it if they want to but it's something that if they're taking your children if they're taking the things that are most precious on this planet and trying and using them to destroy everyone else that is something that we need to really take a look at it's gross to say the least. And and that's why I don't care. Like I think I think that Ed has a very valid point. Trump is a totally in on the whole thing. What you know, as far as I agree. He, yeah. But so is Clinton. So they all are. That's the only way that they get in those positions is to they it's almost like and I don't again, I'm not saying that this is absolutely true, but it seems like to get in those positions they have to have something on you. Like you had to have done something. Absolutely true. You know, and that's the only way you get there because otherwise they can't control you. Like, I mean, they could, they could air my laundry and, um, I mean, there'd be some embarrassing things, but it wouldn't be anything totally disgusting. Like I wouldn't die over it. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't go to jail over it. So it's, you can imagine if, if, if you're in a position of limelight and people come out and all of a sudden, and you think you're given all this power and they go, Oh yeah, but remember this. And they've got a picture of you putting your, you know, you know where, and blah, blah, blah. Um, all of a sudden, your whole game has changed. And I'm sure that these elite people are not stupid. And they don't have the kind of money. That everybody, this one world order has to do with the freaking money. It's the banking system. And I don't really, I wish I knew more about it, but I'm not, like, I'm not privy to that information either. So all I can do is, like, try and you know, dig into whatever position I, I have that's feasible. And, but again, it always comes up the same. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Sherry, I agree with you about the, there is something in, in his blood sacrifice and these rituals that they do, that they do get power from that. I'm convinced of it, you know? Uh, but they wouldn't keep doing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm saying it's not, that they're not disgusting. It's just that if they weren't actually getting something from it that they thought they couldn't get any other way, they wouldn't keep doing it because it's rampant in those, in that, in that, whatever it that is. Right, and and um and and you know Epstein was friends with the Rothschilds. You know uh, Epstein says that um he met Dershowitz at, at a Rothschild party. Mm. But now, that I don't. Sense. I I got to tell you this though. I don't think that either Trump or Giuliani have the first clue about anything involving black magic or rituals or anything. They're not just, they're not tuned into that. Um, I don't, I, they may not. They, they yeah. really may not, but I find, but it's just like they're the Masons. Of, they're out of the loop on that. <laughs> well, I, 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 I kind of agree with the pair of you because we, we know Trump's a Mason. Um, to, to what level does his Masonry go? as far as he's useful to them. So, 
he's only going to graduate to the point where he basically um, exceeds his own usefulness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just there. And like, so like he'll only know as much as they let him know as long as he serves some purpose. Does that make any yeah. sense? Yes. Trump's a simple minded guy. Yes. And, and he's not someone who's far away from me. You know, um, I, I've been in the same room with Trump a couple of times. Um, uh, I, Marla Maples, when that whole scandal with Marla Maples took place, uh, she was hiding out at my friend's apartment. So it's like a small circle, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and then I ran into him once at the U S I, mean, I made a joke as a long story, but the thing is <laughs> he was kind of giving me dirty looks at the U S open one time because I had made some jokes about wiretapping Marla Maples at this thing. And I think it got back to him, <laughs> but yeah. And then I sold my condo to one of his bodyguards. Then I, I did work for Keith Schiller, okay? I did a job for him. We, we know him, you know? So it's not like a far away thing for me. And he's not, mm. I don't think he's a black magic kind of guy. He's a simple minded guy too, in a lot of ways. But, it, and he's definitely a, a pervert. <laughs> I tell you that, you know? And, uh, and, and this is where we are just speculating. But I mean, he could yeah. be in on the rituals, he could be in on whatever. Like, you know, like I was saying, they'll only let him go as far as he's useful to the organization, in my opinion. Yeah, I know. I can't see, uh, I, but I can't see Rudy either. But then again, Rudy did go and do that thing. He did the whitewash for Aquino. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that. There's, there's yeah. rumors saying that he was at Bohemian Grove as well. I'm sure. They may not okay. know, but they may be perverts, like you said. So maybe they're really enjoying that kind of thing. And oh, that's the other that's, kind of energy. Yeah. There's got to be a ton of blackmail dirt on Trump. There's no doubt about that. Oh, and can you imagine, I mean, the things that he's, I mean, just the things that he's exposed of himself in the public, you can only imagine his true, you know, I mean, we know that he's, he's, he's probably gross. So the whole bottom line is, though, is that that's the feeding. Mm -hmm. And this is where, like, he is, they're puppets. They don't really, like, his ego and all of that, like, just how inflated he is and then you know the the way that he speaks to people but yet if you actually look at his record yeah his he can power his own space propulsion system with his ego oh and, and that's and but and don't think that he hasn't <laughs> um the whole thing is is that his international negotiations are not what everyone has seen in public He's actually a very good negotiator. Like you said, he's an actor or whatever, but he has his ratings are way better than any negotiations we've had here in America before. Yeah. Yeah, you know, David K. Johnson did a great article um, in the Daily Beast about uh, one of Trump's employees who, who was a, a, a worked for Trump over there in, the, in Trump uh, Enterprises, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy was working for the CIA and stuff like that. He, and, and, and then there's a, another guy who's doing business with that, that's partners in some of his hotels that was running a prostitution thing on a boat. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sleazy stuff around this guy yeah. that you got to wonder how he stumbled. If, if, you know, if he's not in with them, there's so much blackmail dirt on him they could have brought out. This whole Epstein, I guess the Epstein thing, you say, well, they can't because Clinton was also up to her neck in that, you know, and so were a lot of these, you know, uh, yeah. uh, these uh, media guys too. You know, when I had um, Henry Vincent on the show, the guy who the the male prostitute who did the um, the book Confessions of a DC Madam. Uh, I actually in, heard that show. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's good. Pretty good Sorry. show. Yeah, the guy's well, great. Nobody interviewed him too. He's only done like four or five interviews uh, with people too. Oh wow! And when, he was weird. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm I'm sorry, that was mean. But now the guy's been through hell, and yeah, now the guy's been through hell. They put him in prison twice, you know, and they 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 really damaged him there in prison. But the I thing is, it, is with him is, uh, you know, he was dealing with this guy Craig Spence, who was this high, you know, political guy in, in D.C. And Craig Spence's his bodyguards were Secret Service agents, and Craig Spence had a whole videotape thing going on, blackmailing people with videotape. So it goes up to the highest levels, mm -hmm. but. They yeah. set themselves up for it. You know, it's just like, I mean, I have a perfect example here, and I'm not going to mention a bunch of names, but it's there's some elite families that are here in Colorado, and they hire these security teams, mm -hmm. and they are on 24-hour surveillance. 
because they're so paranoid about, you know, somebody getting in or somebody being around or somebody doing something to them that they are constantly monitored inside and out of their houses, their offices, you know, everything. And what's with all that paranoia? Well, if you're not, you know, in my opinion, if you're screwing with people and you're doing things that people are going to either find out about or, you know, you know, there's a reason to be that way. But I also think that it it gives them, it it can backfire. Well, essentially, yeah. That's the whole idea of this. And that's kind of, you know, I studied law because I wanted to learn the back doors because I knew that in magic, in every single thing that there is, there is always a way out. Mm-hmm. And that's what I started seeing in our judicial system. And that's why I believe so much in magic. And that's why it's not yeah. because I was raised in it. I mean, I was. And so I think that gave me an understanding. But it's like I'm seeing it everywhere. You're right. And I have to admit, like, I, I mean, I've always been a, you know, I've always had a semi-scientific mind. But I've always looked, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a dreamer, you know, a spiritualist, mm-hmm. that kind of sort. And... um that being said, I, I've, I've never always taken absolutes as gospel, right? And um, so, like, you know, I, I didn't cling on to a religious upbringing. I didn't cling on, you know, I thought I was atheist, and now I'm questioning that. You know what I mean? These kinds of things in life. But um, I don't know, man. I, I, th- I think ultimately, I think you're right. I think these things do exist. It doesn't matter whether or not we believe in it. They do. This is what we have to look at. And the, and obviously it's doing something for them. And it's they- working. Whatever it is, it's having an outcome. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen it work. It, it works for sure. And, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but you know, I was an evangelist with a tent, traveling tent ministry. Did you guys know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you told me something about that at one time, which was such an interesting. All right, do tell. <laughs> well, that's about the whole story. But you know, when I got saved, you know, you know I, I went. I got saved with a guy who did ran a tent ministry, and Reverend Knight up in Maine, and I, I lived with the tent. I traveled with the tent up and down the East Coast, and then gave my testimony. And, uh, and wow, <laughs> wow. just throwing that in there. Yeah, that's cool though. I, yeah, but that that's just it. I mean, like um, th- these forces that are at play. They definitely have this very dark, spiritual, deep-rooted bit, which I have no doubt in my mind. I, I, I totally convinced. I've been doing a lot of research in the last couple of years regarding uh, certain bloodlines, certain families, uh, pre-Germania, the uh, Finnish uh, history, and what have you. There are a lot of um, reasons to believe that there has been so much arcane knowledge that's been taken away and hidden from us that like, I mean, for us to talk about astral projection might put us out into the hippie crowd and, and people might think we're, we're, we're weird, but that's activation of the pineal gland and, and DMT being absorbed into your you know bloodstream and, and that's self <laughs> induced. <laughs> so, I mean, these things that we don't know much about, are, we only don't know, know much about because they're unexplored. Sorry, go ahead, Sherry. They know about it. That's, that's, it. that's why that's they're it. hiding it from us. And and the thing is, is that people can deny that if they want to. But mm-hmm. I've actually, I have interviewed people that were recruited into groups where basically they were paid large amounts of money to sit and meditate and put focus in certain areas or view different things. And we're never really told exactly what was going on but would just be contacted i mean there's a whole it's not it's not something that they are not aware of and that they are not using and that's why i believe that they have they have way the the capabilities of the government and the elite that are actually in power i think we don't even have like they haven't even shown us that movie yet yeah yeah it's a true story i uh and, and also look at, too, look at the fact that uh, out of all things that you would consider spiritual, whether it be um, life after death, um, uh, spiritual travel or astral projection, but, you know, all of these things seem to have um, a synthetic counterpart now. So instead of 
astral projection or dreaming. Now we have virtual reality. Instead of life after death, we have uploading into the matrix. We have all these other concepts of thoughts now that are starting to take place and are actually replacing um, spirituality on a core level. And they're doing it by removing spirituality from the youth. I have no question. I think it's hard to do because a lot of the spirit uh, to me what's happened is is that there's been a mix of spirituality and religion and religion has come in and given people the idea that they are no longer responsible for saving themselves yeah. and that's where in and being reared the way I was and and not just that but also watching yeah and I think I think this is why I think this is why the church wanted to appeal to the pagans so much back in the day because they needed their support too. Right, right. You know, um, and that makes sense if they're using the and and they even I think you said it earlier they're using. I mean, I was reared Wiccan, and so I know a lot about the different holidays and different things, okay. and. and when my kids would go to school and be talking about the the history and and different things about you know um, holidays, it it <laughs> first of all it was, it was quite a shock. But secondly, I mean it was it was very familiar, and then also altered. And I feel like that part of the manipulation on this planet is taking the Christ vibration and turning it into something that is perverted. Yeah. You know, and because the because Christ walked it, and Christ, you know, there, there's a difference between showing and living and walking, than you know, a lot of yeah. Well, it, uh, go ahead, it, sir Ed. Yeah, it's really interesting because you know when I was a kid, right at Easter time, what they would do is the pet stores would sell you these little baby chicks. You know, it was like a pet, right? Mm. And all those chicks died in a week, man. No one could take care of these little baby chicks. So they were doing a, an animal sacrifice of millions and millions of little baby chicks on Easter, you know? And, and then when you look at the, um, we eat a ham, you know? There's a, they're, they're slaughtering thousands of these hams, you know? Thousands of these, millions of these turkeys on, on Thanksgiving. And, and what was the other one too? On Memorial Day, when we remember our war dead, what do we do? We go out. Into our backyards, we create a fire and we grill meat, hmm. <laughs> flesh, yeah. animal flesh, over and, and over. And we're poppies. Right, and this is the tradition, you know. <laughs> and it's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's built into these traditions. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay, with all that said, okay, I'm a, I'm a God-fearing, Jesus-believing Christian, okay? I'm saved by the blood of Christ. And uh, there's plenty of good churches out there that, that aren't into controlling anybody. That uh, you know, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I've been involved. In all, I, I've been involved with Dave Wilkerson and stuff like that in the Times Square Church, uh, and, and and really good pastors that don't want to steal your money and no one wants your money and stuff like that. No one wants to you know brainwash or hypnotize you know. So and I would definitely recommend anybody to you know to really seek this out, the truth, and, and read the book of you know Gospel of John, and uh, and you know look into this. Mm -hmm. Wow. Without, well, the, without sacrificing the chicks in the end. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Keep the chicks out of it. <laughs> but isn't that mind blowing? Because when I was a kid, every I can remember walking by the pet store, and there would be three hundred chicks in the window, you know. And a week later, they're all dead. Wow. Huh? Yeah, it's mind bending actually when you think about it. And that's how many years in a row did you witness that? Now, <laughs> yeah, my whole childhood. Jesus crying out loud. So, um, all right. Well, we're going into the third hour now i'm gonna uh call her a call her a night very shortly guys i'd like to thank you all for being here with us um do you guys have any uh thoughts in closing about where things uh may be headed i mean i i, I expect things to get a lot weirder before things start making sense to be honest well you can buy my book <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where, where are things heading? I I I wanted Trump to win because I think this is going to spur the uh, the street protesters and the street fighters and and invite, uh, invigorate the left. And um, we need to train street fighters to to take back this country and take back our you know. I couldn't and, agree more with that. Yeah, you know, Sherry. Well, I wish I had that much faith. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, I'm sorry. I hate to be the nay nay, but. 
I just think people are too stupid. And I walk around and I'm just, I'm watching people and they're so, it's not, and I hate to use, I, I shouldn't be using the word stupid. It's really everyone, as soon as this, give it five, six more days and everyone's going to be back into survival and worried about, you know, how they're going to make Christmas because that's what's around the corner, you know, and all of these things will just be poo-pooed away. And then we'll have, you know, whatever happens in January. And, and it seems like if people are not uncomfortable, they just let things roll. Yeah. And, oh, I mean, it, 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 won't, it, won't be a, it won't be a good day when they finally realize that it's affected them and that there's nothing they can do. Um, I don't know. I, can't, I wish I could say I shared your, your negativity there, Sherry, but um, I'm a bit hopeful. I do agree with you that people right now are far too unaware um, to even really base an opinion. I mean, everything they, they witness and observe is coming through CNN or the CBC or the BBC or some other shit official channel owned by the, you know, owned by the corporate media. So, I mean, it, it's, it's not totally their fault. But at the same time, it's their fault. <laughs> okay, let me say this. I'm 54 years old. I yeah. was first inspired by the idea of revolution when I was 17 years old in high school. Mm -hmm. I have never been more confident or more encouraged in my life than when I see these young kids that were inspired by Bernie Sanders and understand that we're fighting against the 1% and are not afraid of the word socialism and, and, and are now angry and agitated and today, you got high school kids taken to the streets. We didn't have that 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You know what? You're absolutely right. And you know what? Those kids are the ones that are going to join the ranks of those Eastern European kids who grew up with war and who are more politically aware and who have an idea of the impact of their decisions or lack thereof. I, I, I actually, I am glad you said that, Ed. No, no, I'm encouraged. And, uh, and there's people around the world, too, that, that, that want to come and help. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, uh, even, even, you know, like 10 years ago, um, like nobody would be talking about this kind of stuff, would they? Oh, I was talking about well, it. Well, <laughs> there's the odd few. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just being in general. I mean, who would be listening to us? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, um, right. People are talking about it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, here we are. I mean, here we are today. I mean, uh, Sherry, uh, rest assured. I mean, we're, we're all here trying to, uh, to front the battle and get, uh, you know, Get, get awareness levels raised up a bit and uh, also try to encourage other people to spread the word. I mean, you know, you, you, can't, sit, you can't sit on knowledge um, and not share it. It's selfish. <laughs> I agree with that in a lot of ways. And I also feel like you've got to be, um, the things that are going on on this planet right now and the, and the things that are in, right in everyone's faces it seems like if you have to point it out, they're probably not ready to see it. And you can't, this is, this is also a planet of free will. Mm -hmm. And so that why, that where people are going to decide, they're going to choose what, what direction that they want to go. And that's, to me, that's the apocalypse. That's what's here now. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's, not a, that's, not a, that's not a four letter word in my vocabulary either. I think it's a very positive thing because we are due for structure change now, aren't we? We have to. It's. I mean, it's gotten so bad. It's just like we've been talking about. That's what's running our world. It's not just America. Mm -hmm. They have taken over. The, the banking system is everywhere now. So that means, and, and you look at the United States having their, their military in, what, 160-some countries or something ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's yeah. already happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, poof. I mean, some of the uh, some of the standoffs we've seen in the United States just this year alone have just been like in the realm of like shows like the twenty like twenty four. You know, I was I was I've been waiting for Jack Bauer to come. Maybe he should run for president. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to get to see to you. I've got to run for president. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I'd like to thank you guys. It's it's been a great show. Very, very interesting getting your guys' opinions on everything. Ed, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Robert. And Sherry, thank you as well. You guys have been really great. I'm gonna close her out now. I'd like to thank the uh, the people here that are left in chat. <laughs> we got four remaining online, and uh also the good people at PIR. Uh 
It's been a blast. And uh, until next week, this has been the Save the Silly Humans project. This is episode five, Thursday, November 10th. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. That sound, yeah, yeah. Take these walls and rip them, rip them down.